Welcome to my review of the Micro Vector Flight Controller. This flight controller is made by Eagle Tree Systems, and I had the opportunity to help them develop this over the past year and help them um, in testing different features, um, like mainly in the firmware. So I've had a lot of experience with this flight controller, and I'm going to tell you in this review why I think it's a really good flight controller, one of the best ones out there right now. So I want to show you what's included as far as cables. You're going to get, when you buy the Vector, pretty much all the cables that plug into the side of the Vector. All these cables here to go into every plug except the satellite port plug, which I'll get into later. You can optionally, if you get a GPS or something, you can purchase these cables, which is a long bus cable and a short bus cable. Then, if you're going to be using the PSU, which I will get into more in depth in a minute, you can buy this cable which will connect from the vector to the PSU. Some of the cool accessories they sell. GPS, that will plug directly in using um, the bus cable. You can just plug it directly into the vector, set it up, do a compass calibration, and it will be working great. That's one of the super nice features to this flight controller is that you can get a GPS, plug it right in, it works great, very easy to set up. You have waypoints, loiter, return to home, all those features unlocked for you on your mini quad or whatever you decide to put it on. There's also the info panel, which if I didn't mention before, this has an OSD built in to this one board. This board has an OSD and flight controller that supports eight kilohertz multi-shot. And this basically is an info panel. This will allow you to change your settings, whereas you can normally change them in the OSD with stick menus. You can change them using this if you don't have a video. And there's the alerter, which will has two buzzers and some LEDs, and it will um, beep and flash lights to have arrows or just when starting up and different things, different lights for different signals. You can configure a lot of that in the GUI. I also want to talk about receivers and what receivers this flight controller supports. This flight controller does support a variety of receivers such as CPPM, SBUS, and standard receivers. But now with the micro vector we have the added supportability of Spectrum satellite receivers. Um, there's a special port inside of the Vector that allows you to directly plug in a Spectrum satellite. Okay, here are all the cables plugged into the Vector that you will receive. Here you have your ESC wires, and bear in mind that you'll have your motor one, two, three, four, five, six. This does support hexacopters, up to hexacopter. Then you have one ground wire, so all your ESC grounds need to be connected together into here. You do have the option, you don't have to connect the ground, but I, I, from my experience, it's a lot better to connect around due to you can get some um, noise in your system that you don't want if you don't connect your um, grounds from your ESCs. Also, I've had some weird issues when I don't, so I recommend connecting your ground wire. So I want to go over how you connect the vector and wire it up if you have it on a radio controlled airplane, how you connect the servos specifically. So on the case, each output is labeled. And that corresponds with all these white wires coming out of the vector here. The white are all signal wires and they will go to your different servos, the different yellow or white wires on your servos that are signals. Then this ground must be connected to the servo ground. This ground coming from the vector, you can't connect the ground to the battery, you have to connect it to this output here of the vector. All the grounds will be connected together. So then you will need to have your own 5 volt regulator, some kind of 5 volt regulator that supports enough amps to be able to power your servo. If you have a PSU, this PSU will not power your servos, the 5 volt output. It does not have enough amp rating to be able to power all your servos. So you have to get it some kind of external BEC. Okay. This shows you where you have the power inputs. And one thing I should mention while we're here is in the OSD you are able to get voltage monitoring without this little unit here. So just with the standalone vector, you are able to get that. Basically, you connect the positive wire to your voltage monitor top, top connector here, the top wire, 
you'll connect to the positive of your battery and that's all you have to do. Of course you have to have the ground hooked up also. Also you can put um, your power for your camera in. Just make sure it is 12 volts going into your camera and it goes into the camera input and then your camera outputs wire correctly. Make sure with all of these connectors, especially the power ones, that everything's wired correctly. Because if it's not, you could put current through this board and it could um, destroy it. Be very careful with your wiring. And I would recommend using a current limiting light bulb to the first time you plug in. You can put um, your 12 volt power directly into the vector for the video and camera. If you do this, you have the option to program a switch on your controller to turn off and on the video transmitter, which is extremely useful at a race where you want, don't want to power up, but you want you don't want to power up your video, but you want to plug your quad in. It's a very nice feature, but you have to wire in your 12 volt power. This flight controller is very very high performance, far more high performance than the big vector, and it's about almost half the size, which is another huge advantage for it. The performance is really good. We have some great features like we support multi-shot up to 8 kilohertz. We can also change a lot of really advanced settings in the stick menus for this flight controller or in the GUI. Like um, all the filter options are configurable. We have a, also have a D-term notch filter in this flight controller in the code. It's another thing that's great about getting something like the Vector is they have great customer support and they're very quick to respond to any of your questions. So aside from performance, there's a lot of other reasons why this flight controller is just really good. OSD is one of the top ones for me. The OSD is amazing. You can change every single setting. Also, you, when you set it up, you can set it up fully in the OSD and it will walk you through each step. So for a beginner, this is a great flight controller, way easier to set up than most. Also, the GUI is great. You can change stuff very easily in the GUI. But everything you can do in the GUI, you can also do in the stick menus on the Vector, which makes it amazing if you're out of the field and you need to change something or just for setting it up if you don't have access to a computer. It makes it super simple, although you definitely want to update the firmware first thing when you get it. So you probably need to do that. Um, I just want to thank everyone for watching and be sure to check out the link in the top of the description where you can purchase the Vector Flight Controller. Also make sure to check out the video at the end of this video where you can see the vector in action and see how well it performs.